G'day folks, it's Jimmy here from The Hard Rock Show and all the other things. I am sitting in a cafe in a suburb called Seddon. The Seddon Deadly Sins Cafe. I am in the big room and the good room. It's called the good room. And I'm interviewing an absolute legend today. I've interviewed some legends. This guy's a real legend, Mr. Nick Barker. Let's go. Hello everybody, I am here with an absolute all-time legend of the Australian music industry, yep, Mr. Nick Barker. How are you buddy? Jimmy. Thank you for coming on. We are, gonna, we are gonna have a talk about a very special event that uh, Nick has got on. The Happy Man album, 25th <laughs> anniversary. <laughs> First question for you, how do you feel knowing that this album is 25 years old how, how does it make you feel apart from the obvious answer oh 25 years i don't know it, i mean when you look at it as a number you go 25 years my god it's such a long time it's quarter of a century and all that kind of thing but you know you know me man i mean i, I haven't really stopped playing no so it's not kind of like i've gone done that album and then you know really just sort of faded off and then you know, dust it off the guitar and come out. I mean, I haven't really stopped playing, so I guess, you know, and, it's just you know, I play Time Bomb, you know, I've been, probably played that song five million times since, so it's not, yeah, the, it, it, it's, a, it's a shock that it's 25 years old, but mm. I just think that's just part of growing older, isn't it? I mean, yeah. you know, you've got children, all of a sudden you, you run into someone and you go, your kid's 18, God, yeah. man, I remember when he was this, yeah. and it's that type of thing. Yeah, exactly. But it's just... What, what's more surprising is how well it still stacks up. Yeah, That's more does. surprising because if you listen to like, say for instance, I don't know, it's just, I don't know, sometimes you pull a record out and you go, oh, I mean, mm. I, I kind of think that there's more stuff that you made in the 80s really dated quickly, but... Yeah, a lot of the hair bands. Yeah, yeah <laughs> or just even general, I mean, even some of those replacements records who are my favourite band. Yeah just a, sonically a, aren't great sounding records because yeah. of the yeah. the new technology that was around yeah things changed but i think with happy man it's still you know it's a good it's a good rock and roll record you know it's a bloody great rock and roll album so I it's it. it's still it still stands up it's, there's nothing on there that i go yeah Ugh, you know yeah, yeah. whereas maybe some of the other stuff i've done it was a bit like that but mm -hmm. so that's that's a good thing you know it is now, in regards to that then, what are your memories of recording the album at the time? Because um, the Reptiles had finished up, mm -hmm. you'd taken off for a little while, had yep. a break, and it was a new start. Yep. So what was it like go, starting again and, and doing that album? It was nerve-wracking. Mm -hmm. um, having come out of Reptiles, which was a band, you know, and we played a lot, and so we were pretty tight, Yeah. you know, and we were, we were you know, it was a band, so... Mm -hmm. Regardless of my name being out from, we were an actual band. So sort of doing a solo thing. I'm one of those people that can't handle... I'm not great with the realms of possibility. And, mm -hmm. you know, when you don't have a band, yeah. all of a sudden things could go... They don't... You know, this sounds really hard to describe, but they don't seem finite. You know, when you have the reptiles, it's like, okay, you do your bit, you do your bit, you do your bit. That's uh -huh. done. Yeah. But when you're solo, you can... People will say, oh, why don't you get this in and this in and this in? And I was going... Oh! So the pressure, you're feeling the pressure at that time. Well, just how, which direction to take. Yeah. So I kind of let the songs dictate it. But Richard Pleasance was, who produced it, was, was incredible. Yeah. You know, and the more that you listen to it, the more that you can kind of hear his influence on it. There's a lot of sort of that descending Beatles-y sort of stuff, which, yeah. well, you know, I'm a Stones guy. You know, yeah. But that, he's, that's him. You yeah. know, that's his kind of... And we wrote quite a bit of the stuff together. Mm -hmm. uh, so... You know, it was it was one of those things where you know you can look at most great records you like, and you know whether it be ACDC or or, or whoever it is. And sometimes when you dig in to it, mm -hmm. you'll find that there was a producer that made that record what it was. And right. I think Happy Man was a was a thing of that. And we recorded it out of town most of it, so it was done up at Dalesford. And ah, right. 
you know, most of those guitar sounds are, you know, guitar cabinets like in the back of either Tim Henwood's Commodore station wagon oh, or my my station wagon, but I can't remember which one it was, but his was a V, I think his was a VH, mine was a VC. Yeah. But one of them sounded better than the other <laughs> to put two two off caps in the back of. So we just so, run a mic out the window and mic it up. And just sat them in the back seat. Yeah. Shit. Or in the they were wagons. So oh, we flat right, right. So yeah. they were like a little mini. Yeah. So stuff like that, you know. And That's if you cool. listen to Time Bomb really carefully, you can hear cockatoos on the vocal track because really? all my vocals I did, I did them outside. We'd just throw a mic out the window. Yeah. And. You know, and if, I don't know if anyone's ever recorded vocals outside, but ah. because there's no room, it's completely without any effect on it. Wow. So okay. we just ran a lot of them dry, just being outside. But we had to kind of finish vocals before about this time of the day, which is about four, four o'clock. Because of the birds. Because of the birds. <laughs> but we kind of we were going late doing a, a take on Time Bomb. Yeah. So we better stop, we better stop. And then the cocky started. And, and, but that was the best vocal take, so we had to... I'm going to go back left, and have a listen to that. Yeah, really hard to hear. It's in that breakdown bit, yeah. but they're there. Wow, hmm. that's fascinating. So it was it was a great experience. Yeah. Because, you know, all the reptile stuff we'd done in sort of big studios in Melbourne or America, and yeah. this was just really... It was the first... Oh. It was when the first digital recordings were starting, so we were using ADATs in those days, yeah, right. which were shocking God. things, you know, because they never synced up and it was yeah. all those dramas. But it, yeah, it was the first. So, but what it what it gave you was the ability to kind of record anywhere. So. Nice. Now, leading that leads me on to Time Bomb. I'm going to ask you about Time Bomb because that's one of my favourite songs you've ever written. Mm. I love that song. That hit number twenty on the Triple J Hottest One Hundred in yep. nineteen ninety four. Yeah, that's when Triple J still Probably cared. 95, I think. 95, is yeah. it? Well, it's the, generally the following year oh, from the yeah, release. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. That's when uh, Triple J still cared about, you know, local <laughs> artists and stuff like that. But we'll get to that. When when that happened, how did you feel about that? Because you'd had some success with Reptiles, but obviously this being your own thing. Well, I kind of felt, you know, before I put this record out, you know, there was a real shift in the music industry and the way it was going, mm-hmm. due in no small part to kind of, you know the Seattle scene yeah so it had gone from kind of you know when I was trying to do in Reptiles it was sort of like you know Jason and the Scorchers that's what we wanted to be yeah yeah right you know they tried to turn us into Guns N' Roses yeah. which didn't work because we were never that kind of band yeah, we true. weren't a guitar band like no, that no. we were a bar band yeah, you know yeah. we couldn't play like those guys you know so it, it didn't work so then all of a sudden you know there's this new shift in music and I put this record out and you know I still to this day maintain that it took the record company that I was with completely by surprise because mm. Triple J unlike uh, other radio stations in the 80s and that you, the record companies hadn't could have they couldn't sway them you right. couldn't influence them really? you couldn't pitch so you couldn't to them, pay them off or anything well like and you just they, they were un, they were really straight down the line you know yeah. so if they, they played something because they liked it right. and they flogged that album they like did. it was album of the week yeah we did the we did live at the wireless yeah you know, each single that came off it, they just played it to death. Yeah. And Time Bomb was the one that they really liked, so they played that even more. Yeah. And consequently, it, it you know it was number twenty on the hottest one hundred, and that was when it used to be on New Year's Day, I think. Yeah. Because I remember listening to it mm-hmm. and just kind of being knocked for six. So you had no idea. Well, no, I did because Triple J ran me and said, "Look, we, your song's rating really highly. We don't know where it's gonna." gonna turn up but could you just do a promo like this Nick Buck you're listening to the hottest 100 so they must have done that a few days before right so I had an idea but I kind of thought maybe I can't even remember what they counted down from but I thought it might have been in the 80s (laughs) (laughs) I didn't know it was going to be 20 and that was a it was a pretty solid year that one too I had you and mine yeah that's right so it kind of you know I'd gone from feeling completely out of place in this new music scene yeah. that was going on with Big Day Out and all these kind of new bands coming through to actually kind of, you know, I'd back myself in, I'd back my songs in and, and you know, it had, it, it had been justified. So yeah. it really, you know, as I've said, I mean, that, I owe that album a lot yeah. because, you know, whether we're, if it wasn't for that album, we probably wouldn't be having this conversation yeah, right now. You it's know? unbelievable, so, isn't it? Yeah. But that's the music awesome. industry. You know, it spins on a dime. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I wanted to ask you... Um, about Hey Hey It's Saturday. Yeah. Because <laughs> you guys perform Worlds of Peach um, on Hey Hey, yeah. right? And back then at that time, Hey Hey was massive. Like, 
you know, I remember myself, before you'd go out on a Saturday night, you'd be watching Hey Hey It's Saturday. You and everybody and else in the country. Yeah. And so that was a big deal. Hey Hey It's Saturday, to me, still, when that stopped, was one of the biggest blows to the music industry. Mm. Because yeah, not only were they incredibly supportive mm. of... Do you in no small part to Daryl Summers, man? Like, yeah. You know, he, he, he would handwrite you a card after each time you went on it. Like, really? He'd write it. Wow. And make some comment to the song and go, yeah. you know, that's like... He that's was awesome. a real deal. He was a really good guy. Yeah. And that show, I mean, look, they'd have three things on a night, you know. And as you say, I mean, I'll, that was one of the highest rating shows. And for a, for a band, you couldn't really get on a better show like no. it was better than the countdowns or anything like that yeah. and, you know and you and you saw it in your yeah. live shows yeah. you'd notice a real spike when you were on Hey Hey people really? would, yeah. yeah just because it was kind of you know that, that was the only real way you could get mass exposure yeah yeah, yeah that's right because there was no there was nothing else there was really. no countdown then no, well there might have been countdown revolution but it wasn't the same as Molly's countdown yeah you know, and there was no real music shows. You know, no. there was rage and you know things like that. But so, as you, you no, you're spot on, man. It was a, it's huge. It was an incredible, and they were they were an incredible bunch of people. You Do know? you remember much about that night? About that being there and doing and playing? Oh yeah, yeah. We'd come back. We were on tour with um, when um, Happy Man came out. We did this huge tour with the Bad Loves. Oh yeah. And a, and a band called the Plums, who were a really good band. Caroline Kennedy. She went oh, on to I be in Dead Star. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. We did this pure, like, oh, it must have been a two month tour mm. nation. And that was when the Bad Loves were, I mean, they'd sold a quarter of a million records. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they were flying. We were playing 2,000 seater, you know, big theatres and big venues everywhere. And yeah. so we did this this huge tour with them. And it was just such a great tour, yeah. such a really good bunch of people on it. And so we'd flown back from Mount Gambia that morning. And we'd have to get up. Get on this little plane at this crap little airport, and you know I've been on the piss all night. <laughs> Ask him about Mount Gambia. See if he tells you the story. Right. I'll leave it up to him. He may not want to right. tell that story. But, I'll ask him. But <laughs> when we flew in, you know, it was and come in and we just to do hey hey. We, wow. we flew back because that's how much it meant to the record. So the record company kind of got us back there to do yeah. that. And on this little tiny little plane, it was, it was Buddy Holly, you know. But it was, <laughs> But it was well worth doing, you know. Absolutely. But I remember, yeah, I remember that day vividly. We were at 6 o'clock in the morning. The flight was like 7 o'clock in a little kind of tin shed at Mount Gambier Airport. <laughs> Scary stuff. But, yeah, what a fantastic experience, mm. you know. Now, after the reptiles finished, you had a, a reasonably long hiatus. But it yeah. was only probably a year or so, yeah. But Yeah, it was probably a year. I went overseas. Yeah. So before you came back, were you... Were you simply just worn out from, from all the touring you did with reptiles? And oh, I don't know if I was worn out. I was just more confused as to where, yeah. what, it, what it all kind of meant, you know, because I, 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 as I said, I, like I'd been in these, I'd been in the recreary for a long time, which was a really independent, inner city independent kind of band of, of guys who were incredibly creative yeah. guys, you know, and I'd sort of been the bass pro in that, and I'd gone from that to reptiles, which was this was such a huge publicity machine at Mushroom at the time and it was you know I was doing all sorts of weird things like you know I'd wind up in Dolly magazine and all these things I was going to talk to you about Dolly magazine yeah and it was, <laughs> but you would kind of just you know I was a pretty amicable guy so I just kind of went with the flow and so their publicity department they were great people you mm. know but you know they're but they were just you know you, you could be on MTV, you could be on Triple R one day and Dolly Magazine. You just do all this stuff. Yeah. And a lot of it didn't sit well with me, you know, because I felt, I don't know, I'd just been in these indie bands all my life, yeah, you know, and I kind of felt... Kind of wasn't who you I felt were. like I was selling out. And yeah. So at the end of it all, I just felt like a bit of a joke, which is right. more about my personality than than about any anyone, you know. Yeah. I was really fortunate for all, for all, the, for all the stuff that Mushroom did for me, but I, yeah. I did feel like I was a bit of a that I'd been overhyped or something and I felt like I was I always felt like I was a songwriter first That's and right. foremost and a kind of yeah. this sort of rock star thing you know third or fourth yeah try to turn in your Ax Axl Rose or well a little I like guess that, you know yeah. but we were just a bunch of hard drinking kind of barroom guys like I said you know yeah. we were never we were never gonna you know we just were too good of guys to ever be 
anything like that. So anyway, like I, when I got back, I was just sort of like I just didn't know where I where I was going to fit in. Right. And I just was like I said, I was a little bit confused about where the music industry was going and what my part in it was because you know my reptiles for four years we were just flat out playing. Yeah, and you guys were everywhere. And we didn't um, didn't really have much ch- chance to sort of take stock of it, you know. Yeah. So just go 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 the whole time. Yeah, and they really and they threw a lot of money at us, you know. Yeah. But you know, I look, it's such a hard thing, Jimmy. You know, you just you don't want to seem ungrateful with the things I would have done differently. Yeah, probably, but you know, there's also you kind of got to I don't know. All you can do is just kind of everyone wants to be kind of Paul Kelly as a songwriter but not everybody can be you no. know you can't no that's right and everybody as an an artist with artistic for artistic credibility wants to be Nick Cave but they, they can't be you know no. No. and I you it's know not. I was a pretty bad heroin addict coming into reptiles so I was, I was pretty lost anyway you right. know and so by the time I sort of cleaned up yeah I kind of didn't really know who I was you know so and then all this stuff happened so I was just sort of like because uh. I was going to say yeah then that would be tough um, I would have thought, like going from that and getting clean and all that sort of stuff, and then yeah, like going I got clean the sort of during the reptiles thing. Right. You know, like right. I was on a methadone program, and yeah. you know, I was just drinking a lot. And look, you know, I, reptiles probably saved my life in a lot of ways because yeah. all of a sudden it gave me something to focus on. But it just meant that I didn't really have my wits around me. You know, yeah. I was just sort of, I was yeah. just kind of going from one thing to the next, which is kind of how you got to be. You know, right. you live one day to the next, and so I was really, really fortunate, but. Yeah. It just sort of meant that I really didn't... Once it all finished, is my point, is mm. that I just kind of didn't really know who I was. I was yeah. just sort of going... You needed some time. Yeah, mm. yeah. But you, know, and, but, you know, like I backed myself in with my songs and yeah. Happy Man's a testament to that. And If you listen to Happy Man, a lot of it's about drugs. You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, I was going to ask you a question about that, actually. But not, not specifically about drugs, but I was going to say, lyrically, um, to me, you know, you've always been an incredible storyteller. One of my, that's one of the things I love the most about you is Thanks, the, Jimmy. the way you tell a story. No, it means a lot. It's quite unique, right? The lyrics on Happy Man, what are the, yeah, the meanings behind them? You kind of just alluded to it. But well, it comes back to that point of me, you know, you saying I, I didn't really, I hadn't really had time to process a lot of what had happened yeah. in the years leading up to Happy Man. So I had that time overseas and then I got back. So once I'd written kind of Time Bomb and Action Jackson, I, mm. everything just started, so the lyrics started spewing out of me. Right. You know, Richard started calling me auto lyric. <laughs> you just... Because we'd kind of, we'd worked these songs up, you know, yeah. when we were demoing them, and then I'd just kind of go and sit next to the dam that was on his property, and I'd just, I'd just have a piece, you know, a pad of paper, and I'd just start writing. And things, and it really, that sort of, that sort of amount of, what's the word creativity I haven't experienced since right. where I've just written lyrics after lyrics after lyrics in such a short space of time like over the space of a week or two mm-hmm. um, so all that stuff just spewed out I mean it was all about you know a lot of it was about to do with drugs a lot of it was about to do the theme that happy man theme was about to do with having felt like a bit of a a bit of a product of the music industry yeah, and a right. bit of a clown which yeah. is like I said it's a it's kind of a little pathetic now looking back on it. I was like, oh, you know, leave, leave it off, Nick. You're laying it on a bit thick. But, <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah. lyrics are a snapshot of who and exactly. where you were at yeah. any time, you know. It's so story. That's, that's kind of how I felt. You know, here I am, you know, I'm this I'm this sort of, I felt like a bit of a clown. That was mm. the theme of the record. Wow, so yeah. yeah. That was where Happy Man came from and, you know, tear off the shrink wrap and this, yeah. I'm this product kind of thing. So, miserable yes. prick. <laughs> <laughs> Now, uh, in relation to Happy Man, your favourite songs off the album, is there any, like, one or two songs that are really special to you, and why? Uh, that song, Happy Man, to me, lyrically, it, it kind of, to me, that's, that was one that really hit the nail on the head. And also because, you know, it was always just this sort of kind of silly, well, not silly, but it was, it was just a ballad. Yeah, you know? yeah, right. And Richard turned it into that kind of nutty mm-hmm. thing that it ended up being, and it really reminded me of bands that I was in 
in the early 80s, in particular a band called The Curse, who I was in with right. Adrian from The Reptiles, yeah. and a guy called John Rao, mm-hmm. who's passed away, uh, Graham Scott from The Models, and yeah. and a guy called by the name of Nick Needles, who basically, he did all the artwork on the record, right. and he was my main influence as, as a songwriter. Like, he was, when I was really young, playing in his bands with him was... He was what I aspired to as a songwriter, and that was the sort of song he would write, that really kind of nutty... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that weird chorus in it, and yeah. Richard really brought that out of it. And, and Nick was the guy who actually, you know, I co-wrote Time Bomb with. Right. In a, in a weird way, in as much as the actual dun 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 riff was mm-hmm. a, from a song that he'd written in 1983 called Elephants Never Forget and they had that so I took that 10 years later and and turned it into the song that wow. you know now because it wasn't that's all I had in the different <laughs> lyrics and different melodies so. wow that's cool so I kind of yeah I guess Happy Man it, mm. f- as far as really just tying everything in a neat bow for mm. me it was a real a it was a huge changing point in my life you know yeah. there was everything leading up to happy man and everything after for yeah. me so it's like it's it was too, a punctuation mark for me in my life yeah. you know it's a real crossroads almost like two careers in a way with, with what without, you've done previously. without a doubt yeah that's really interesting okay um righto now the gig because this is what it, this is all about this album was released 25 years ago and nick is doing a very special one-off gig yeah to celebrate it now it's at the spotted mallard where is the spotted mallard it's, it's in, in sydney road brunswick it's sydney road brunswick. it's right opposite the old bombay rock oh right yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's going back a few years, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes spotted mallard which is in brunswick friday the 15th of march mm. now um what can we expect on the night? And the album? As, yes, the album, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Not in order, because it's a terrible order to play live, because it starts with Time Bomb. Right. And yeah. then everyone would just leave. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yes. So, anything special happening apart from all of that? Like, you're going to mix it up a bit. And is is this the Happy Man recording lineup, or who have you got No, playing? it's not. Who's playing? I would have loved to have done it with Tim and everyone, but yeah. it just... The band that I've that I'm in now a band called The Heartache State we know them we love them yeah yeah. that's the band that I want to be in and that's the uh-huh. band that I want to die in pretty much yeah, cool. I don't mean that figuratively I mean I don't mean I don't want to go out and die wrap a truck around no. a tree I'm, what, I, no. what, I, what I mean by that is these are the guys I feel most comfortable with but yeah. it is Venom and Venom played yes. on Happy Man so yes. that's there's one yeah I mean so that's kind of 25 years since I've been playing with Venom so. yeah but it's just the band, these guys, I mean, and, you know, we've played Time Bomb and songs like that. So they know a lot of the staff. And yeah. It's my comfort zone, you know. And the older I get, the more I kind of gravitate toward people. That I, I, I'm a creature of habit. Yeah. And those guys are the guys I feel most comfortable playing. And vocally, we're all, we all know where we sit. And you don't need to, you know, okay, Justin knows that he sings that part and Tony sings that part. Everyone, our vo- voices are all just yeah, from, from being playing together. Yeah. And, you know they're my guys you know and yeah. i just want to do that and Excellent. they've stuck with me so you know mm. we just do that but it's just in a lot of ways it's closing the chapter by doing this you know i don't mm. want to you know i really don't like all this well i mean it's not that i don't like it i don't want to be a part of this whole rehashing the past thing that seems to be going on i mean i like to do that one show yeah. and just say okay you know this is this record as i said I, I owe it a lot yes and it deserves me to kind of mark a night you know oh, look yeah. i don't know 50 people might turn up i just don't know jimmy you know look but it, for me it's more like let's play it and then just move on and look well, i yeah. probably won't even play time bomb after this anymore it's you know? what you want to do so well i'm writing good songs and my yeah. band's really good and yeah you know, I, I don't expect anything out of this band. I don't expect us to take on the world. I mean, we're all kind of in our late forties and fifties, but it's you've Just got to have fun. some reason to move forward. Yeah. And I don't want the reason for me to be still playing is because I'm playing stuff that was 30, 25, 30 years old on a on a on a festival with a bunch of bands the same age. You know, yeah. I mean, more power to their arms, but it's just not it's for not me. I mean, I'm not that bad off for money that I need to do that. You yeah. Know, so. Well, you've actually answered my next question because the next question uh-huh. was going to be, is this a one-off gig or were there any other plans to take it mm. further into state and that sort of thing, but clearly not. There's no money in going into state, you know. Mm. People say to me on Facebook, you know, oh, bring it into state, bring it into state, and it's like, well, 
It's a lot easier for you to get on a plane and come to <laughs> Melbourne than it is for me to drag yeah. everybody in because I've got to find a venue. That's right. Get We're a rock and roll band. You can't just play in any old venue. You mm-hmm. know, it's just... No. Half our problem is is because of that, because we're a rock and roll band, we, there's not so many places we can play. I mean, there's no. quite an Alab Mallard. I don't know, I'm sure we can play them, but it's just, you know, people get really nostalgic on, on social media and half of them don't even end up turning up. Yeah. So, like, I'm much as I love it, because it's a direct conduit to it's people for me and I like to answer people's things and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. I just, I don't trust that following thing and going thing and oh, all that yeah. sort of nah. stuff as far as I can you, spit man yeah you, know? you put a you put a gig up and you'll get you know 300 people say they're coming and on the night what happened ten, Facebook ten said that there was 300 coming <laughs> there's only 50 people in. Yeah, that's right I'm a realist man you yeah. know I mean, I, like I know what I'm worth and you know you can't expect people to kind of you know, I think people have to wait to... Like all these big sort of retro festivals that I'm talking about, yeah. you know, they, they've got a great business model, you know, because people do like... Hmm. They want to go out and relive that and they want to go to a winery and do all that. Yeah. I, I think that's great, good on them, but I just don't want to be a part of it. Not that I've really been asked, but... I was going to say, have you been asked? Not really. I've been asked to do a few things, but I just don't fit into it. I mean, I haven't stopped playing, so no. to, to me it's kind of like, well, you know, I'm still playing. I've... Yeah, there's no... Got new songs, of, you yeah. know, and I'd, I'd rather go and play in a bar to 50 people playing new stuff with the Heartache State than I would play to 5,000 yeah. who only really know Made Me Smile and perhaps Time Bomb. Yeah. And the rest I could do Justin Bieber covers and they wouldn't have a clue, yeah, which is, you know, but, but like I said, each to their own. I'm not, I'm not about to kind of, you know... Yeah. I think you undersell yourself a little bit, though, in respect <laughs> to that. Because the Reptiles gig last year, we went to that... And That's a different animal, though. Well, yeah, man. true. Reptiles is... Yeah. Um, it was, that was a great night. Yeah, but you could only have done that once, mm-hmm. you yeah. know? Yeah. Because if you put reptiles in, say, one of those kind of festivals, we're too heavy for a lot of that stuff, yeah. man, you know? Yeah. Honestly, true. we played Gimpy and they were like... <laughs> a few years back when we reformed really? after the community cut. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're kind of martial stacks, you know yeah. I mean? We're not heavy as in heavy, but we're we're a loud rock and roll band. Yeah, that's and and the music's quite aggressive. It's not, you know, I think "Make Me Smile" is a really bad representation of what the Reptiles did, especially on that first album. I mean, that was like "Gutter of Love" and "Show You the Scar." It was quite fast. Yeah, Yeah, you know, the harmonicas really. It was really kind of dirty blues. So, you know, I just don't think people kind of really. I mean, I love it. I mean, we, we used to play at bikey festivals. That was mm-hmm. our thing. Like, we would get asked back and back and back to, to motorcycle club festivals in the in the eighties and nineties. You know, that, that was our fun. thing. Well, they were great. They yeah. loved us. They yeah. got us. We had a harmonica play. Mm. <laughs> and, you know, you turn up to a, a big ten thousand capacity, you know, coffin cheaters or hell's angels. You want to have a harmonica play? Absolutely. And we had a real beauty. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. One of the best. So mm. you would have coughed it otherwise. Yeah, yeah. So it was great. We we could make songs go for fifteen minutes, no worries. <laughs> just, but I just don't think that would be translate so well. You yeah, know. fair enough. Well, the last question for this uh, for this part of this happy man interview is. You've got many, many fans out there. There's a lot of people that love you and yeah. respect you. What would you like to say to the people out there, the fans of, of Nick Barker, Nick Barker and the Reptiles, Nick Barker and the Heartache State, Nick Barker and Nick Barker and this? Just that I'm not, that I'm... <laughs> the Heartache State doesn't have Nick Barker at the no, front. Nick right? Barker and the Heartache State. No. It's just the Heartache State. Yeah. So. Yes. But um, I'd say that, you know, if you're a fan of what I do and any songs that I've ever written, I'm... Yeah. I'm, I'm still making stuff. Yeah. I've still probably got records you haven't heard. Yeah. So, and the beauty of it is everything now has been put up on Spotify by a, by a great little uh, bunch of guys at Lay My Music. Mm-hmm. They've nice. basically taken all these masters that have just been sitting around gathering dust and they've just gone, bugger it, we're going to just put it out. Mm. So God That's knows what will happen. But, you know, this is, you know... I, it's all up there so if you want to if, the, if you're a fan of mine and there's stuff that you haven't heard there's you know you could sp- spend a weekend listening to Nick yeah. Park. but you know with my two albums with the Heartache State mm. we're making another one I'm still excuse me I'm still writing mm. but I'm still playing around so you know so that's the thing I mean this isn't a um, obviously this is an anniversary of the album and you're yeah, going to play it yeah and it's a great that. record as I yeah. said I owe this album like one gig yeah you know and it's not as if it's going to be hard because 
you know, it's with my band and it's a great rock and roll band and it's going to be a great night. And then, you know, once we finish doing that album, we're just going to play heaps of stuff. Yeah. We're going to play heaps of stuff from the albums after that. So it could, could wind up being a two-hour night, you know. So it'll That's be a good one to see. Absolutely. Because, I, as I said, after this, I'm, I'm going to really, you know, I'm not going to be playing these songs anymore. Wow. You know? I mean, it's a famous last words, but... <laughs> The Heartache State now had two albums. We're going to have a third, so we're pretty much standalone band now. So that's where I want to be. So yeah. And where are you at with the next Heartache Heartache State release? Where is it at? Well, it's we haven't recorded it, obviously, but I've got you got stuff seven or eight songs. You know, hopefully Justin's got a few, and you know, it's just it's just a real easy band, fun band to be in. The recording's real easy. It's just you know, we're just going to bang it out and. I don't care if 10 people bite Jimmy. I mean, obviously, I'll, probably I do care, but, you know, I just I just want to keep moving on as a musician, and I can't do that by looking backwards. I've got to go exactly. forward. Exactly. You know. I think, I think that's an awesome thing. He's still going. He's, he has been in this industry nearly 40 years, <laughs> I worked out today. Right? I'm not saying that no, to try no, and make you feel No, no, that's not quite true. I reckon it'd be... 1980? That's not 40 years, is it? 38. 20, 2000, 2000. I'm 54, so I reckon I, I started in it when I was probably... If you count local gigs in Mount Waverley, I reckon 16. Wow. But then 17, 18, I moved to St Kilda, and I was, that was when I started playing in pubs. So. Right, yeah. So, you know, he's been around and doing this for a long time, and it is all still going to happen after this. So this is in the end. <laughs> yeah. We're not saying goodbye to him. No, we're just saying goodbye to... Yeah. A the period. happy man. So, I mean, we did it last year with the 30-year anniversary yeah. with the reptiles. You yeah. know, that was that was a great way to kind of just commemorate that. And, yeah. You know, as I said, I'm never saying never. Someone could turn around off the reptiles 20 grand to play. I mean, we're not going to, you know. Yeah. But I just doubt it. And it's just, you know, we we were kind of too good, too good a rock and roll band to be. We're just not that sort of band that fitted into those. Into yeah. those. We never did, and we no. never will, and I'm proud of that. You know, absolutely. We we, we, we play out our own. You've row. done it your own way. Yeah, yeah. For all the Dolly magazines and stuff that yeah. I did, you know, which was Dolly. had nothing to do with the band. He was in Dolly. Yeah, poster and everything. In My a wife terrible had suit. it. Mm. <laughs> but uh, for all that, you know, there was 200 really gritty, pissed pub gigs a year, yeah. and, and probably. You know, fifteen thousand k's of driving. You know, so we're we were with the real deal, man. And we Absolutely. got drunk every night, and yeah. you know, I'm not Lived saying kids it. don't try this at home, but yeah. we weren't no made up band. You know, no. we were the real deal. It's the reptile, so Absolutely. I'm proud of that. Absolutely, I'm and proud so of you survived, should be. Didn't I? Yeah, exactly. Still going. So um, yes, spotted mallard um, Friday the fifteenth of March. Yeah. Uh, the tickets, Sydney Road, Brunswick. Yes, yeah, Sydney Road, Brunswick. The tickets are available now through Mosh Ticks. Mm. And um, if you jump onto Nick's Facebook page, there's a link on there, um, the page event and whatever. There's a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, get on it's there also, you know, as I said, it's just going to be a good night. We're going to do Happy Man and then we're going to come back on and just, you know, anything that anyone wants to hear, I'll play it on the night. So. Yeah, so yeah, if I oh, yell gonna, something out, you're going to play it if I Providing it's post-1994. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Because I'm going, and we're, and I'm going to yell. I'll yell something out and see nah, if you right. You won't on. stump me, Jimmy. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> you might only get half of it, but you won't. <laughs> You'll be about to play it. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Really appreciate it. Oh, no this. worries, man. Thank you. I hope that the gig goes well. I know that it will. Um, we're going to be there. Some people from the Hard Rock Show will be there for sure. So we're going to have a lot of fun. And I'm going to have some fun. He's going to have more fun than us because he's going to be on stage doing it. So yeah. see you there. Friday, 15th of March, Spotted yeah. Mella. Let's do it. Thanks, Nick. Unreal, Jimmy. Cut. <laughs> <laughs>